My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, today we're going to be talking about what's perhaps the best package of reprinted material that was put out by either of the big two, Marvel or DC. Absolute Batman Year One, Frank Miller, Dave Mazzucchelli, Richmond Lewis on the ones and twos, one of the great collaborations in uh, mainstream comic book history, and one of the best uh, pieces of reprinted material that I've ever seen from these big two. Like, the other great reprinted stuff from Marvel or DC is published by other publishers than <laughs> Marvel and DC. I, I was trying to think of, like, what have been good additions, and some of them are mistakes. The The Jack Kirby Fourth World hardcovers were beautiful, but the paper was apparently not the paper they planned to print them on. You know, this is a... I, I agree with you completely, Ed. To me, this is by far, hands down, the best book Marvel or DC has printed in terms of presentation of the content. But DC had a lot of practice. You know, there, there, there are a couple of things that make this project unique, and we're going to get into them. But first, right off, I bet most people watching this own Batman Year One in some format. The book, you know, it's, it's been, from its original run on, has been reprinted in several editions that have been of pretty good quality. Whenever they collect the book, and we're going to see that comparison, Richmond Lewis recolors it for the graphic novel, for the better paper, for the collection, the standalone, you know, one volume version. And so this is a particular book that has been repackaged and put together several times. And DC's had a lot of, been able to do a lot of homework to get to this point of like the apex of, of really collecting a comic book. We did a, uh, an interview with Dave Mazzucchelli from the Comics Journal. We did a review of it. And one of the things that he mentioned in the interview was you you want to do everything you can to be the last person to touch your touch the work before it goes off to press, and uh, just with the little bit of knowledge that I have in the game, whenever uh, my my X Men books came out, uh, my first X Men book, and uh, my my buying temperature with the company is very high, uh, sold a lot of them motherfuckers, and they were like, Ed, what next, man? And I started thinking, like, well, what next? Like, I would, because I want to, like, I liked uh, recoloring X Men One and trying to, like, maintain that that life that was in the the original four color process. I floated to those guys. I'm like, yo, can I do like a Treasury edition where I recolor um, Daredevil Born Again? And they said. Probably not because there are personalities involved, and like that's how they said it. And to me, what that means is like Mazzucchelli's going to want want the shit to look a certain way. I give him a lot of credit for this. I think you know, like I could be wrong. This is conjecture, but this is the best package to come from the big two. And with my little anecdote, I feel like he must have something to do with it. You're probably right, Ed. Um, the reason. You know, like, Mazzucchelli is so particular in production and things and, and treating this stuff as art. Uh, it's part of the reason a lot of his books don't get reprinted at all, like the rubber blanket and stuff. You know, that's the edition. That's what you have. So um, he probably did ha does have some role in how this stuff is put together. And, hey, if he does, he, he, he deserves it because these are gorgeous. Here's so whoever's responsible, tip of the hat. And here's the other thing, man. Uh, I've, I've snooped in some other Absolute Editions, they are just uh, money grabs. Uh, a, a layman, a non kayfaber would say, "What the fuck are you paying a hundred dollars to get two of the same thing? Like that's just padding. Um, you know, they're just upselling you, whatever." But as makers, that's where this book excels, man, because you get your issues kind of version of uh, the the story, which. Yeah, we should say this is an approximate reproduction of the original publication, which was in four issues of Batman. Right. And they were done on newsprint. So this is kind of like newsprint with a glossy cover reproduction. And the noteworthy part, I mentioned Richmond Lewis recolors it whenever it gets collected into a book. And there's a version of that here as well. Just had to manipulate the, uh, the the white balance a little bit because shit was getting a little hot. But in my mind, this is one of the greatest coloring jobs using the traditional four color process that you know decades of Marvel and DC Comics used. Look at how great that looks in the foreground, the train tracks, incredible. Uh, but Richmond Lewis is a fine arts painter, and so she brings this certain I don't know eye for color or something, 
and you know, married now to David Mazzucchelli, so I'm sure they worked very closely on some of these ideas of how to best make this look good, but it absolutely sings. Like, this is taking that four color process. It's never been done better that I can point to an example of. And so I have actually tracked down the original issues of this because I love this version so much. And I like her recolored version too. Like, it's equally exceptional. But to me, like, these are extraordinary comics and DC did a great job with this package. I mentioned Jack Kirby's Fourth World is another really nice hardcover collection they did. They also had great paper in that in those reprints. That's something that a lot of companies mess up whenever they reprint comics. Right. They do coded stock on books that were originally on uncoded, and it makes a difference. The colors look totally different on that coded stock. So coming up with this paper to print these on, great job. Wonderful job. Great attention to detail. And it's awesome to see them a little bigger than the original printing. I uh, really get to appreciate that art and, and see the beauty in these. So let's go to like sort of one of the more famous. Uh, I drool over every pieces. page. <laughs> Some of the monochromatic pages, you know, like where it's it's predominantly blue or something, you know, like a night scene. Like this one is the one I was thinking of as you know that nighttime scene, and it's just it's two shades of blue and in, in the color of the paper. And look at that Tothian line quality there, man. Yeah, we'll get to that in some of the reprinted materials in this collection. So uh, we're going to skin this cat many different ways. That was the the term I was I was looking for, and we're not going to cover the story or any of that. Uh, that's 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 for a bigger, longer video. This was always one of the panels that that had a huge influence on me. That magenta sky <sighs> masterpiece. And, and like you could just see the influence that, that that this that this would have Headlights in future years, by. man. Like Paul Grist saw this. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all did. Lapham saw this. The the drawing just being such a pure form of drawing too. This reminds me when you see comic panels blown up as pop art. Every other panel in this book could be blown up that way. For sure, man. So this volume is the newsprint version, and then this volume is the collected graphic novel version with the recolored material. So like I like to show off how Richmond Lewis ain't playing when she is working on her color for this thing, man. Look at that. Yeah, and so And it's two different moods, you know? It's 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 two completely different reading experiences, man. Like this is pulpy, you know, like, look at how bold the lettering looks, like, compared to almost, like, hard to read. This feels more subversive or whatever. This is, like, the gentrification of comics is, is on board, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this this is a pre- and post-graphic novel expression of what comics are. It's a great, man, it's great to have these two, to be able to compare them side by side. Even the choice by DC to make two books rather than one collected volume so that you can do a side by side comparison. Yeah. If this is all bound in one thick volume and it's not that thick of a book, it wouldn't it be, uh, you look at some of their absolute editions, it wouldn't be outrageous to have this all in one spine. Somebody decided to make it two books instead of one and they made the damn right decision. And that's and that's what makes this a master class in, in comic book making, man. The fact that we can sort of compare and contrast. But not only that, man, the back matter in each of these is important. This is how they get you to buy it. <laughs> it is extraordinary. Little little uh, almost mini artist edition of, of reproducing this artwork too in nice four color like that. We got the Frank Miller script in total. So cool, man, to see a typed out script. Early, early uh, Mazzucchelli figuring this stuff out, working out pages. Yeah. In pro, in pro, in progress. This is uh, when you see this, and then you know what it turns into. This is the very dicey part about uh, being independent car cartoonist in a lot of ways, man. Um, not, it worked out for Mazzucchelli, but what I'm trying to say is. They're, uh, a cartoonist can probably fuck themselves up at a certain stage, usually in the inking, in the finish, you know what I mean? Like, this is actually very spare and chill, but it's often in the finish that uh, a cartoonist makes their stuff look bland and weak and, and, and crappy. Some of this reminds me a little bit of, uh, there's the Daredevil issue that has, it's Klaus Janssen does finishes on Daredevil, the Frank Miller Daredevils at some point. And there's an issue with Black Widow's splash page where they show the layout, the Frank Miller rough, and then the finished piece, of course, is page one. Right. And in some ways, like, you see it with some of this stuff, like how loose some of these pencils are. 
and then he's doing his own Klaus Janssen is going in and like he's drawing in the ink stage. He's doing that finished illustration in the ink stage and the pencils are just kind of there just enough. You know, the, the barest minimum, the structure that you need. Jimmy, if I would have saw this as a as a as a youngster, it would have been so crucial for me, so important, man, because the way that I worked on my comic pages as a boy when I was figuring this stuff out my paper was like fully taped down to the drawing board and abiding by like perfect perspectives as much as I can. And it created this like very rigid, ugly, geometric set of drawings. But the stuff looked cooler in my sketchbooks uh, because I was like less precious about these sorts of things, man. Now he's, this is pretty close, but uh, just to see the looseness of the work would have um, really been beneficial. And this is the money stuff. I die for these. These were drawn at about a quarter of the original art size. So like four on a page, you know, like the 10 by 15, 11 by 17 pages. And then I guess blown up. I don't know how he actually transferred them to the pencil stage, but you'll see like these are so detailed. These are probably more detailed than the pencils we were showing on those previous pages that he was inking on where like he's working out all kinds of information on these pages and to have these reproduced next to the script we, we've, we, we looked at the Dave Gibbons Watchmen layouts and talked about that being a master class in making comics. This is, this is your next stage because this is just all the information that you could possibly need. I mean, Masterpiece comic, I think most people agree Batman Year One is one of the great comics. And then like all this extra information, it should be $100. This is, this is a college course. This is an advanced college course on deconstructing one of one of the most celebrated comics in the history of DC Comics. One of the uh, strictures that that uh, Alex Toth sort of abided by when making his comics, he said something about, like, you draw the hell out of it in the thumbnail stage, and then, uh, you know, you could be speedier with the inks or so, something like that. Uh, get it all right at this level, and then you could practice the art of reduction. I used to do little bits of uh, construction and carpentry and stuff, finishing things, things like that. And you would paint something or you would varnish something and you'd do several coats. And it was always, if you get the first coat right, you can have a party with the rest of it. Like it really does set the stage. And that's what this is. You know, if these figures are right, if these compositions are right, you could ink this a dozen different ways and it would look great. I love seeing the Miller script. I got to tell you, it's really... Uh, enlightening to see how he writes. It's a very visual approach, and in a lot of ways, it's it's when you hear scripts. Sometimes people would describe them as like they're they're the plans. You know, it really feels like it because he's running several lines of like inner monologues through this story, and so the script really keeps that all organized, which is pretty challenging. I don't I. I don't know that a that a new comics creator would be able to to work at this level. He is running several threads, and to do that in conjunction with the visual component, it's a lot of information to like conceptualize in the early stages. And that, isn't it funny too? That's like one of the things when you are young and you read this for the first time. It makes you think that, uh, that well, this is how comics have to be, and it's so uh, ambitious that that's not a good place to start for a, for a guy like me for a maker like me i have to learn as i go i have to I have to it has to be this mounting building education it's the ira glass quote you know that it takes uh everybody comes to this stuff because you're a fan of quality work and what you're capable of is so far removed it's terribly discouraging to see what you do <laughs> um, it takes a long time to get to this level mazza kelly you know one one takeaway i have for this and it's really come to pass i think in the last 15 years the Mazzucchelli style of this story is a lot of artists use it now. And I think that it works well with coloring. So I think they're also referencing Richmond Lewis's approach to color. It's a very sophisticated uh, contemporary style. And it was very different than the stuff around it. Um, we have a video where we look at like, I, I think it's issue 401 or something. These are like 404 to 407. And it's a, by Trevor Von Eden, the issue that we look at, to yeah. give you a comparison of, like, what did comics... What, what were the other Batman comics before this and after this look like? And they look much more like what you think of as comics, whereas this style, a lot of contemporary cartoonists use this style. 
It's a style where the rendering is not performed in the ink as much. Right. You know, it's not a lot of hatching. It's it's very subtle indications of texture. Shadow tends to be black. You know, it's black or white. And then it allows the colorist to go in and, and really add to the art. When you see things at this level, too, man, you gotta you got to think that, like, Bruce Timm took a lot of that, like, whenever it was time to start doing the design work for the animated series. Yeah, I would think so. I think anybody... You know, once you look at this from a visual standpoint, this is one of those works like I almost have to shield my eyes at some point or else I, I it, it will influence you. You yeah. know, it, it's hard to avoid it. Like this is just look at how beautiful that drawing is. It's totally simple. It's just a character's headshot and it could be a portrait with just a couple of lines. Let's take a look at some of the back matter in the uh, graphic novel version. Yeah, this is some great stuff, too. You have to make sure it stays on that side, Ed, or else it might go home with me. Right. <laughs> this was in one of the uh, one of the collected versions, one of the paperback collections, like an anniversary issue maybe, of Mazzucchelli doing some back matter and, and, you know, talking about Batman, Batman comics, his history and connection with the character and with previous Batman artists and things. Yeah, he really nails that Golden Age style uh, down to the lettering. It's really nice comics, and it's it's one of those you don't think of when you think Mazzucchelli, like, go seek out the back matter in the second version of Batman Year One or whatever, but it's really great. This feels like it informed some of your X-Men collection and back matter in, in, in the X-Men. Oh, definitely. Like, whenever I was, like, selling them on, you know, print this thing bigger, uh, all of that, like, and, and also for the, the uh, what do you call it, the omnibus that may or may not happen due to the certain public health crisis that, that we have going on right now. Um, I wanted to include thumbnails. Like, I'm basically cribbing the whole thing except putting it in, in one hard hardcover, man. Big inspiration. And these are submission pages that Mazzucchelli uh, sent out whenever he was trying to get work. And fans of Batman Year One, if you're watching this video, I assume there are a few of you, it is worth seeking out his early Daredevil stuff. Yeah. Even before Reborn, um, because you see sort of the transition, the bridge between those submissions and how he gets to this point. You can almost watch that progress. And he's one of the great figure artists in comics. And you really see it on display in those Daredevils as like he's flipping around rooftops and running around and fighting. It's a it's a showcase, man. We are cartoonists. We are makers. And we do look at this in a certain way, man. But uh, I've, been to a, I've been to a comic shop or two where... Uh, Batman uh, Year One comes up in conversation, and the proprietor is like, "Oh yeah, that's the one where David Mazzucchelli quit quit drawing good." <laughs> 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 wow. and, ju and just but with that little explanation, you probably know exactly which store I'm talking about. Man, <laughs> this is like Mill Canif. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, you know, you can see it in that in that little four page Batman strip backup. The guy's a you know com comics historian, of course. Man, I love seeing the evolution. This was such an iconic image of Batman. Like, this is what I knew for Batman Year One before I ever read Batman Year One. And it's, it's, it's stunning. And it's the negative space of that leg sticking out with no lines on it. Where's the teardrop quad muscles at? Like, come on. <laughs> Brilliant. The evolution of a page. Look at how great that one color is with the silhouettes. That's a movie poster. And that monochromatic kind of build, take your magenta and swing like a little bit, a little bit of yellows added in or a little bit of blues added in to get some purple, but mostly it's built around that magenta color. And examples here of the blue line color process, man, where the black line would be on its own acetate overlay. Um, it would be printed, this art would be printed in a very light blue. That's where you see like the mm -hmm. lettering and stuff. Uh, so that Richmond Lewis can go on top, color it as she sees fit, and then you marry them up uh, in the final process. That's what those little, you, those are called registration dots for you youngsters out there who uh, do or do not watch our channel. Beautiful just as a painting, several of these images. Oh, for sure, for sure. Well, that's that's actually like when I'm coloring my, my stuff, that's one of the my favorite things to do during say, the process yeah. is just like drop the line art and just like look at the weird shapes. And sometimes when I share them online, they, they go over huge. It's neat. I, I always love seeing that stuff and it really shows off. This is really cool. Like some of these covers, you know, from the early editions and things, there are little drawings that are blown up. That was something that really impacted on me was how graphic these things were. Like covers don't look like that. Right. You know, that, that is striking. And in, in an age, you know, I would found this stuff in the age of image, the early years of image. So like 
you're looking at Jim Lee X-Men with seven characters all cross-hatched to death on the cover, and then you see this, it's like revelation. Yeah, it's ballsy, too, because, like, Batman is an iconic silhouette, and you're not giving us all of it on the front there, on your, you know, your main sales mechanism in the in the comic shop. That's one of my favorite covers, that, that one. I, you know, with the white eyes, it's just so striking. You learn a lot about making a good comic out of these two books. Well said, Jimmy. Plus, they are beautiful to look at. So this series, the, the absolute Batman Year One, along with that uh, Watching the Watchmen, uh, Dave Givens sort of monograph about, about uh, the creation of the Watchmen graphic novel. Um, these are two packages that are required for the library of a, uh, a working, functioning cartoonist, man. Like, it's a lot of good stuff to pull here in terms of uh, inspiration alone. But pro the process stuff, I've, I've not seen, seen better process material, even in magazines devoted to the behind-the-scenes elements of the creation of comic books. Yeah, and, and uh, David, if you're watching this, you should come on and talk to us about how this, this gets put together. We have a lot of questions, Dave. <laughs> and you were a teacher, man, so I want to hear about you being shy. You can find some great videos of him like talking comics online. You can see that teacher, that, that articulate ability to uh, really talk about comics. We'll get him on here, dude. In the meantime, we probably should bounce, dude. Like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when the next videos are available. We're on that race to 20,000, man, so make sure you hit that bell. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the link below this video. Pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise and t-shirts at, at the link below this video. All right, Jim, I'm going to go break all my pencils. Oh, is this microphone still on? <laughs> uh, give them the merchant orders, Jimmy. Make more comics.